had a list of specialty pizzas. But each name of the pizza is going to be a link. That when we click on it, we go to this page that is going to show us the name of the pizza, a picture of the pizza, and a list of the toppings that are on it. All right? And we sort of analyzed what components would need to do this. And we sort of, in our mind, thought about what parts of this we've done before and what parts of this we haven't done before. And really, we've done a lot of this, all right? Uh, we're just missing a couple pieces, all right? This page is going to need a grid view. And it's going to need a data source. Because anytime we display data from a database, we got the two things going on. We have the data component and we have the UI component. All right, so how it's going to be displayed. Presentation is another way to say that. This page, we need a details view for this. Details view because we're only showing one thing. And we need a data source that belongs to this. So details view and a data source that goes along with this. This is going to be a grid view. And this is going to be a data source that goes along with that. Now we decided last time that there's two data sources. And again, the way that I like to do it is just verbally describe what's contained, what data is contained in there. And if it's the same thing, the descriptions will be the same. And if it's a different description, it's a different data source. So in this case, we said this is going to be the name and picture, so it's going to be data for the pizza that we selected on the previous page. Can I have your attention, please? 10.19 a.m. this morning marks the great shakeout, bringing increased awareness to the dangers of earthquakes. Earthquakes are unpredictable and may happen where you live, work, or travel. Most injuries and earthquakes are from falling or flying objects. Today, millions of people are practicing drop, cover, and hold on. For more information and for earthquake safety, please visit www.shakeout.org. Remember the, the fine earthquake from like the mid 80s? I think so, yeah. I, I think. It was actually like legit shaking. Yeah. Uh, and, and what it was, where I was, is I thought, like, you know how sometimes, like, if a big truck goes by, you feel like a rumble. You know, the house, the windows rumble a little bit or something like that. I thought that's what was going on. Then I realized I was on, like, the ninth floor of a building. And I thought, how big of a truck would that need to be <laughs> to make it feel like it was rumbling there? So it was like, oh, okay. And then, then I saw that it was an earthquake. But thanks for that announcement. I'll be very aware of that today. I'll be ready to drop at a moment's notice. Hold on. Don't forget that. Drop in what? Hold on. See, I forgot that already. <laughs> See, they, they definitely need to repeat these more often because, uh, again, I only, I only remember the first part. Uh, as opposed to duck and cover if it's a nuclear uh, attack. Um, anyhow, I have no idea what I was talking about. Can someone help me out here? Uh, two data sources. <laughs> Thank you. Two data sources. Because we verbally describe what data is going to be in them, and it turns out to be different. This is going to be, for the pizza that we selected, we're going to show the one pizza, the name, and other information, including the image. This is going to be a list of toppings uh, that belong to that pizza. So already, that's two different things. One is information about the pizza, one is information about the toppings. All right, so different data source. These are going to be parameterized data sources because... We don't want everything. We want only a selected data. We want data for the pizza that we selected on this page. So we're not going to show every pizza in the details view, and we're not going to show every p 
pizza's toppings in the grid view. We're just going to show the selected pizza. So the mysteries that we had from last time. All right. How do you make a link? So we don't know how to do that. We don't know how to display an image. All right. And last, but not least, how is this page going to tell this page what pizza we clicked on? Because we decided that we're not going to have a separate page for each pizza, right? That sort of defeats the whole idea of um, database-driven websites and dynamic websites. That would be like Amazon having a, having a totally distinct page for each product. That would that'd be crazy, right? That's the whole idea of databases is that some of the page can be static, so the basic layout of the page can be static, but some of the page is going to be dynamic. In other words, we're going to get the data for it from, uh, from it's going to be driven from data, so we're going to pull it from the database. So the question was, is how do I get the, the how do we tell, how does page one tell page two uh, what, what pizza to show? And we decided that it can do it by passing over the specialty pizza ID. But we still have the question of how to get it over there. Now, I asked how we do it, and I didn't get any answer. All right? Someone in this room knows how to do it. All right? Well, besides me. All right? And again, after that earthquake thing, now my mind's racing and I'm a little confused, so maybe I don't even remember how to do it. But anytime you have a computer, someone in the room knows how to do it, right? And what is that someone's name? Google, exactly. Google. All right. So let's ask Google how we can pass data between two web pages. So, we'll go to Google. Interesting. I don't know who that person is. I'll have to look up later. I did find a great app for the Android. This has nothing to do with this class, but uh, I'm sure there's an iPhone version too, and there's actually several of them, but it shows the view from the International Space Station. So you can watch sunrises and sunsets, and it's crazy to look down. It's like, oh, that's cool. And then it's like, wait a minute, that's where I live, you know? It's kind of like Google Maps. When Google Maps first came out, I swear I didn't get anything done like the next week because I was Google mapping everything. Let's see the Taj Mahal. Let's see the White House. Let's see the Golden Gate Bridge. Let's see the Statue of Liberty. Let's see the Great Wall of China. You know, I mean, this is amazing. Uh, you know, then, then you have the thing where you like pull up on Google Maps, run outside and wave, and then see if your picture is on there. And of course it wasn't, unfortunately, but anyhow. How to pass, how to make slime is the first one. How to tie a tie, how to screen record, uh, yeah. how to get rid of naps, how to get rid of fleas, how to delete an Instagram account, how to lose weight fast, how to make friends, how to cook spaghetti squash. I'm amazed that that made the top ten. But I, I'm more amazed at how to make slime is like the number one, you know. Uh, how to pass. How to pass a drug test. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out of here. You guys have a great weekend. How to pass data between between two web pages. Share data between HTML pages. How to pass data. Blah 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 blah. But you know what? We don't even have to click on any of those links to see the answer, believe it or not. All right? Because the answer is already in front of us. At least one answer is already in front of us, even if we don't look at any of those pages. Where is the answer on this page? No, right here. The URL. Let's take a closer look at this URL. What did I type? Yeah, right, the cue dramatic music. I really need to 
like do post production on these lectures to like dub in music and sound effects and maybe make it like I'm a ninja master and when I click the mouse it will make a real loud <laughs> you know like that you know yeah there you go all right well that URL is kind of big I'm only interested in part of it what did I what did I type in the box how to pass data between web pages Oh, looky here. What I typed on web page A is part of the URL for web page B. Interesting. And notice what it says. It says Q equals how to pass data between two web pages. All right. What is that called when you have something on a URL that says, and, and the key thing to look at here is there's a question mark. So when I have a question mark and then I have things like something equals how to pass data between two web pages, what is that called? What's that part of the URL called? <coughs> it's called the query string. All right. So two ways or one way to pass data. This isn't the only way. All right. So don't think that this is the only way, but one way to pass data between two different web pages is to pass it on the query string. So, in other words, if my page if my page is called detail.aspx all my links are going to say detail.aspx is the first part of the URL. What's the second part of the URL going to be? It's going to be the pizza ID that I'm interested in. So I have a question mark. I need to put a question mark on the URL. What does the question mark mean? The question mark means this is the start of the query string. What is the query string again? It's, it's data that you're passing from page A to page B. So on Google site, you start up, you get that form. You type it in, you type in what you're interested in. You type in your query, right? You type in what you want to do a search for. You click submit. That sends it to page two. Well, page one has to tell page two what was entered in the text box. So how did it do it? It did it on the query string. So it did. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pass the ID on the query string. Now, Everything on the query string is, is expressed this way. There's a name of a variable, so maybe ID, equals, and then a value. All right? So maybe this is what our query string would look like if we're pulling up pizza, if we want to link to pizza number two's page. Detail.aspx, ID equals two. If the ID of the pizza is 3, then it's going to be ID equals 3, and so on. Does, so there's always going to be a variable name, equals, and then a value. So... There's always going to be a name. If there's more than one value, it'll be like this. There'll be uh, ampersands. So like in this case, notice that Notice that how to pass data between two is just one thing. There's other things too. What does this data mean? I have no idea. But there's other data being passed. Yeah. So if there's more than one field, that's what you do. 
Name one equals value one, ampersand. Name two equals value two, ampersand. Name three equals value three, ampersand. So the question mark says the start of the query string. So after the page name, you'll have a question mark, and then you have the start of the query string. The query string consists of a variable name, an equal sign, and a value. All right? Variable name equals value. Now, we noticed if you look closely at this URL, you'll notice that, whoops, I didn't grab the whole thing. If you look closely at this URL, you'll notice that it substituted pluses for spaces. All right? Spaces in URL names don't work well. So it, it does a conversion and puts the space, uh, puts a plus there. The other thing is you can confuse it if you try to pass an ampersand on the query string. Like if you wanted um, Smith and Barney and you had an ampersand, all right? Um, you, have to, you have to do some special processing for characters like that. We don't have to worry about that in our case because all, all the values that we're going to be passing in this example anyhow are going to be numbers. All right, so there's not going to be any spaces in it. There's not going to be numbers. Or there's not going to be anything but numbers in it. So we're okay as far as that goes. So this is what the link is going to look like. Does this have to equal the column name in the database? Does that have to match up with the column name in the database? Well, the answer is no. No. As long as the page sending it and receiving it knows the name that you're calling it, you'll be okay. So you could call that anything. You could call it Fred if you wanted to, right? You could call it, um, you know, um, data. You could call it anything. I'm sitting here, it's like you could call it anything. And then it's like you could call it Fred, you could call it data. It's like, am I going to list everything that you could possibly call it? No. Just those two should be enough. But I'm going to call it ID. All right, because that makes sense, because it's an ID. Do I have to call it specialty pizza ID, though? No. That's not important. It doesn't have to match that. You can make it match that. You know, that way maybe it will be easier for you to remember. But as long as the page that sends it and the page that gets it knows the name, then it's okay. You can call it anything. And since you're writing both pages, you can make sure that you do know the name. You do remember the name that you use and just use it in both places. All right. So that's how we're going to proceed here. That's how we're going to pass data between these two things. Is we're going to pass it on the query string. So if we look at our drawing up here, this link is going to be different for each pizza. Slightly different. The page name is going to be the same, but the query string is going to be different. So for Hawaiian pizza, maybe the link is going to be to detail.aspx question mark ID equals one. For meat lovers pizza, maybe the link is going to be detail.aspx question mark ID equals two or something like that. So whatever the ID is from the database, we're going to just plug that in, all right, and put it as part of the query string. All right, so that's how we're going to make the link, all right? That, or that's what the link is going to look like. We'll talk in a minute how we're going to make the link. Now, on this end, these two are parameterized queries. Remember with the parameterized query, we put a question mark in the SQL statement. So this might be something like select star from specialty pizza. What does a star mean in this case? All columns from specialty pizza. Where, what's that where clause going to look like?
specialty pizza ID equals question mark. All right, so it's similar to what we did before. All right, what's the difference here? The difference is where that question mark is going to come from. In the previous example that we did, the value for that question mark came in as part of the dropdown. The value of the dropdown was the value that we're going to plug in for the question mark. Here, we're going to pull this value from the query string, and the field that we're going to use is going to be called ID, right? Because that's what we made it as. And again, as long as that page uses the same name as this name, you're okay. It doesn't have to be the database column. What about this? Same thing. All right. Um, select toppings from this table, that table, where especially Pete's ID equals question mark. Where does the ID come from? It comes from the query string. All right. So I hope we at least have a roadmap of what we're going to do here. So this exercise is meant to review some of the stuff we did before and to expand on it to do the new stuff. All right? So let's actually go and, and do this. The uh, query string, again, is just one of the ways we can pass data. There are other ways as well. So don't think that that's the only way that we can pass data from one page to another. We'll, pay, we'll explore other things. Um, I caught up grading, so you may have turned something in, one person did, but um, you may have turned something in, but um, as of whatever day it was, I had caught up in this class, so I was happy. Now I just need to catch up on the rest of my classes. All right, so let's pull this one down. I'm going to make a, another page. I guess if you're going to pick on every little thing I do, then yes, I'll turn the projector on. <laughs> um, now you might, you know, you might wonder, we already sort of have done this sort of thing, right? We already have the drop down that shows the, the pizza and you can pick that and see the toppings. Right. What's the difference with this one? Well, this is just a different approach to do this. You, would, would your website have both of these things on it? Not necessarily. You'd decide what's the best way to display this sort of information. And, and so, you, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to do all of these things. I'm just showing you alternative ways that you can represent this data. This, by the way, is sometimes called a header detail thing, where you have a header table that's the one side of the one-to-many relationship, and then you have the detail, which is all the related information. So, like pizza to toppings, one-to-many relationship, students to grades. You show a student, you show a list of their grades. Um, team players, uh, artist recordings that they made. Anything like that is sort of this header detail where you have one row in one table 
and then the, the related rows in other tables. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create my first page and I'm going to call it list. So new file, web form. Make sure place code in separate page. If I had a master page, I would select that. And I'm going to call that list. I wanted to call it list. I ended up calling it default too. I'm going to delete it and restart. The reason I do that is I found renaming things to be a pain. I don't know in my, I don't know how many years of doing ASP stuff if I ever successfully rename something. Because there's just like always something that you forget or whatever. So usually I just say forget it, I'm just going to recreate it. You probably can rename it. You know, you can probably Google how to rename it. But again, I always seem to forget something important and um, it doesn't work. So I'm going to go file. New again, file, create a web form, and I will call it list. It is important to give things meaningful names. Again, you, you know, you're, you're doing something for an assignment, and I know sometimes quickly if I'm talking about something, I forget to rename things or whatever. But it is important, again, uh, especially when you go back to work on some code later on. So this page is going to be the list of specialty pizzas. And we sort of know how to do this because we're going to have a grid view and we're going to have um, a data source. And really all we need to do is figure out how to make a link. All right. So I'm going to go under data. I'm going to drag my grid view over. I'm going to go to data source drag that over, configure data source. What data connection should you use? I'm going to pick the connection that we have, pizza connection string. Again, you should only have one of those per database that you're connecting to. That's the whole idea. Then you can, if, if something about it changes, um, you shouldn't have to change anything but the connection string. Theoretically, I could take and implement this in Oracle, another database management system, or SQL Server, and all I would need to do is change the connection string to point to the new database, and everything should work perfectly. All right, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to write my own custom SQL, and I'm going to say select star from specialty pizza. No where clauses on this one, because I want this to be a list of everything. I do want an order, so I'll say order by Actually, I'm going to go back and look up the column names. Specialty pizza ID, specialty name. So I'm going to put these in explicitly. Specialty pizza ID, specialty pizza name. All right, from specialty pizza, order by specialty pizza name. All right. Now, remember, I'm only going to be displaying the name on this page. All right. Um, I'm picking the ID anyhow. Why am I picking the ID? Well, it's always a good idea to always pick the ID, right? And why do I need it in this case? I need the ID to make the link. Because remember, my link is going to be to detail.aspx ID equals something. And that something's going to be the ID. ID. So I need that ID to be retrieved from the database so I can pop it in the URL so the first page can tell the second page which pizza we're interested in. All right. I'll do this. I'll test my query. All right. It seems to work. I'll hit finish. I will then bind these two together. 
All right? I could hide the ID, but I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to leave it there because it's going to help me debug. All right? Later on, I'll go and change it. So I'm going to leave this grid like this just for now, just to sort of test it. I'll go back and clean it up later. Because right now, there's no link on it. So I have to go and I have to make a link on it. All right? But I'm going to run it just to make sure that this part works so far. Firm believer of just doing a tiny bit at a time. All right? Not doing everything all at once. And in this case, yeah, that works. All right? What do I have to do? Well, I have to, I'm going to hide the pizza ID, and I'm going to change that pizza name to a link. All right? That's all I have to do on this page. So how am I going to do that? Do I have to change the data source to do that? This is, this is like poker. I'm looking to see if you guys have the slightest tells of what you think the answer is. I thought I saw someone shake their head no. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but that is the correct answer. I don't have to change the data source for that. I'm pulling the right data. I'm pulling everything I need to make that link. Right? Because what is that link? The text of the link is going to be the name of the pizza. I'm pulling that. The URL of the link is going to include the ID of the pizza. And I'm pulling the ID of the pizza. So I have everything I need to make the link. Because if I was making the link manually, well, I showed you what it would be. It would be default.aspx question mark ID equals 1. All right? Actually, let me go make the whole link. I use this thing on the Mac called Quicksilver that allows me to, to launch my applications quickly. And I, I never thought I could depend on an application so much in my life. Every time, like even on a Windows machine, I like look to hit the command keys for Quicksilver and they're not there and I feel a little disappointed. So the link, if I was going to look at it, would be like this for Hawaiian pizza. Again, it always comes back to the HTML, right? It's going to look like this, detail.aspx, question mark, id equals 1, Hawaiian pizza. Hawaiian pizza. So, whoops. So I have everything I need, right? This, all of this is hard-coded except these two pieces the value of the ID, and this. And I still think I'm spelling Hawaiian wrong. You are. Yeah, I think there's an A in, a in here. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, all right. So this part is dynamic, the ID and the value of that text, the two things that are dynamic. So the two things that come from the database. The rest of the link is hard-coded, right? I mean, that's just what a link looks like. No, nothing special about this page. In fact, the first part of the UR, the first part of the URL is hard coded. Every page, this part's going to stay the same. It's just that the value of this, we have to find a way to slip that in there. Okay, so let's go and let's edit our columns here. I'm going to delete the specialty pizza ID because I don't need that. So it's gone. I'm going to delete the specialty pizza name because I am not going to need a label that contains that. I'm going to use a link, so I'm going to delete that. If I scroll up a little bit, there's a hyperlink field. Excuse That's me. what I want to use. I want to use a hyperlink field. So I click Add for hyperlink field, and I have I have a bunch of properties I have to set. All right? Because this link is being populated by data, what we're interested in are these four fields in the data section of this. And we have two pieces to this. One is for the text of the link. That's this part. So that's the te data text field. One is 
the data URL field. All right. So we have two pieces, because a link kind of has two pieces, right? The name of the link and where you're going to it. Those are the most, or what page you're going to. That's the most important two attributes of the link. So, under data text field, I'm simply going to put, I want the text to be the specialty pizza name. All right? Simple enough. All right? So I picked that from the drop down. The data navigate URL field is where it gets a little confusing. All right. Underneath the data navigate URL fields, I specify what fields from the database I want to include in the URL. So what fields do I want to include in this URL? The ID. So I go here and I can type in, I can actually hit that because I can actually pass a bunch of things on the URL, right? We saw in that Google example, um, I wasn't only passing one thing, I was passing a bunch of things. So in this case, I only need to pass one, specialty pizza ID. This is a part, so that so far, that's pretty straightforward. The text field is going to be what you want the user to see. In this case, it's the pizza name. Text formatting, we're going to leave blank in most cases because we just want that field displayed from the database. What field are we going to pass as part of the URL? Typically, that's going to be the primary key, right? It could be other things, all right? But for now, it's just going to be the, the ID. This is the tricky part. Data navigate URL format. Because what we have to do here is we have to tell it the whole URL. So far, all we've said is somewhere on the URL is going to be that ID number. All right? Somewhere on the URL. Now we have to specifically say where in the URL, where in the URL are we going to put that? All right? That's going to be my new expression. Where in the URL are we going to put that ID? Well, we're going to put it here. So the first part of our URL is going to be hard-coded. I'm going to type what I'm going to type in that box in Notepad++ so it hopefully it's more visible. The first part of the URL is hard-coded. Because that part is going to be the same for every specialty pizza. Every specialty pizza is going to be the same. All right? Now we somehow have to say, I want to put in the ID. Remember in the box above, we had the data field, and we said it was specialty pizza ID. So we only had one item. We actually could have a bunch of items, right? We could put a bunch of things on the URL, but we only really need one. Right? If you have the specialty pizza ID, then you got the rest of it. All right? You can pull the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'll, I'm going to type it, then I'll explain it. Braces, zero braces. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you know in programming that usually you start counting with zero. So when you see a zero in this context, that usually means the first thing. So... Bracket, zero, bracket simply means what I'm going to put in this spot in the URL is the specialty pizza ID. Why the specialty pizza ID? Well, because that's the first thing on the list. So it is item zero. If I had other things on the list, like specialty pizza name, And I wanted to say name equals, and I want to pass the name on the query string, I'd do name equals, and then have the one in, in, in braces. Because this is element zero, this is element one. All right? But we don't need to do that. We only need to pass the one thing. If we have the ID, we can pull everything from the database. So... I don't need that. All I need is this. So 
So let's review the things that we have here in this data section. Because the exact format of the URL, of this URL, depends on data. We're using data from the database to make this URL. We're putting the special, uh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. We're using data from the database to make this link. Right. We're using the name to make the text part of the link. We're using the ID as part of the URL. So the data text field, think of that as what the user's going to click on. What do you want the user to click on? Well, I want the user to click on the name of the pizza. So that will be the text field. That one's usually pretty straightforward. You have a field, boom, you click on it. The data navigate field is what data navigate URL field is what you're going to pass to the second page. Well, what did we decide we wanted to pass to the second page? We wanted to pass especially pizza ID. All right? So therefore, we put that in there. The trickiest part is the last part, the data navigate URL format string. This is how we combine, this is how we say how we combine the static part of the URL with the dynamic part. So the static part is the part that's going to be the same no matter what. So we're always linking to the page called detail.aspx, and we're always going to pass on the query string something called ID. So the first part of it, detail.aspx, question mark, ID equals, is simply hard-coded. That's the same for everything. What comes from the database? Well, the value of the ID. Where does it come from? It comes from element zero of this list. So the first element from this list. All right. So now let's run it and see what it looks like. Right. And error. Okay. A field with the name special pizza ID was not found on the selected data source. So what went wrong there? Typo. Let's look at this. Edit columns. I typed in special pizza ID, not specialty pizza ID. I would get that same error, by the way, if I didn't select specialty pizza ID, all right, and tried to use it. What it's saying is there's nothing in the data source that matches that name. Not that there's nothing in the database. There could be something in the database that has that name, but I have not selected it. In this case, there's nothing in the database and I haven't selected it, so that's why I got the error. So I go and change that, and now I run it. And I got that. Now notice as I hover, you can notice down there the status. The other thing we can do is do a view source. And if I look, my links are constructed exactly the way I want them to be. A href equals detail.aspx, question mark ID equals one. And the text is Hawaiian. Detail ASPX equals uh, ASPX quest mark ID equals two meat lovers. Detail ASPX equal uh, question mark ID equals three supreme, and so on. Okay. Questions about this part? This is one of those things that I don't expect you to like get this perfectly just by seeing me do it, right? You don't learn how to hit a golf ball by watching someone hit a golf ball. You learn how to hit a golf ball by doing it, right? So the first time that you go and do this, it might be confused. It might, you might be a little confused. But remember, those, the, remember that the four things that are important are those in the data section. And do your best to remember the role that each of those performs. And then you might struggle a little bit, but eventually I think you'll be able to see how to construct those links. So, now we have page one completed. And again, we could cosmetically change this and so on, but 
basically functionally this works. If I click on this, I go to detail.aspx, question mark ID equals, but I haven't written that page yet, so I get an error. Okay? So let's go and actually write that page. Now on this page, we have uh, an additional challenge that we want to uh, display uh, an image of the pizza. All right, so let's go out and let's find some pizza images. So if I Google Hawaiian pizza and look up images, uh, yep, okay. I'll just do one and uh, then, you know, you should be able to do the rest of them. Let me grab this one. I'm going to save that image to my desktop. Yeah. And I'm going to go create, I'm going to create a folder in my application called images. And I'm going to put that image in there. Now let's think about this for a minute. Somehow we have to associate each pizza with its appropriate image. There's two places we could put that information. There's two places that I could put the information that says for Hawaiian pizza, this is the image. There's at least two places I could put it. One of them is I could put it in the database. I could put the image for the pizza in the database. The other way is I could have a gigantic if statement in my code that says, if it's a Hawaiian pizza, this is the pizza you use. If it's uh, meat lovers, this is the image you use, and so on. Which of those two sounds like a better option? Put it in the database. Put it in right. the database. All our data is going to be in the database. So I'm going to put, I'm going to create a new column in my database for the pizza's image. What type of data is that going to be? In other words, am I going to store the name of the image or am I going to somehow try to store the actual image? Just the name, right? Because that's what the dynamic page is going to need. Because if we're going to make an image tag, the image tag is going to look something like this. So to make that HTML tag, I need the name of the image. So I'm going to go to my database. And I'm going to put in a new column. So I'm going to go to design view. And I'm going to call pizza image. And I'm calling it pizza image because I strongly suspect that image is a reserved word in access. So, short text, that's 255 characters. Yeah, that's probably the size of no image name. It's probably going to be longer than that. Now, I'm going to go in the database for Hawaiian pizza. Okay, yes, I'll save the table. And I'll put in the name of that image that I just downloaded. including the JPEG, the .jpg. All right, and I'm going to leave the other ones blank, all right, and we'll see what happens if we leave the other ones blank, all right. Now, you might ask yourself, should I put the images folder in there? You could put it in there or you could put it um, in the program just to know to look in the images folder. 
That one I don't see a, a strong advantage one way or the other. I guess we could argue that. I would tend to put it in the web page because this is the image. If I choose to move around the image, all I have to do is change the program to look in the new images folder. Yeah as opposed to changing all the rows in the databases. But someone else could make the opposite argument and say it's easier to change everything in the database. I don't know. I'm just going to put the name of the image in there. All right. Okay. So now, I'm going to do this one thing at a time, right? Because remember, this next page, we want to have two big components on it. We want to have the details about the pizza, so I want to show the name of the pizza and an image of the pizza. And then on the second uh, part of the page, it's going to show a list of all the toppings. So I'm going to first do the first part, where we show the image of the pizza and the name of the pizza. And then we'll work on all the toppings. So I'm going to create my new web form. And what should I call that web form? Well, what are we linking to? We're linking to detail.aspx. So I'm going to create a new web form. Called detail.aspx. All right, there we go. I'm going to put my details view. Have we seen a details view in this class so far? I don't remember. A details view works a lot like a grid view. The difference is, is it shows you one thing at a time, one row at a time. All right? And in this case, there's only going to be one row, so that's all there is. So I'm going to grab my details view over, and I'm going to grab a SQL data source. All right, going to configure my data source. Pick my connection string. Next. What do I want to see? I'm feeling lazy. So I'm going to just pick all three of these things. I'm going to use the GUI to pick these. All right. Actually, I lied. I'm going to go here to, see, to specify my own custom SQL. And I'm going to say select specialty pizza ID. Specialty pizza name and pizza image from specialty pizza where what? What is the where clause going to look like? Do we want every pizza? No. So we're going to have a where clause. Pizza ID. Exactly. We, we want to pick the pizza that has a certain value for its ID. All right? So what value is that? We don't know right now. It depends on which one they click on. That's going to be decided at runtime. That's a parameter. So I can say specialty pizza ID equals question mark. Because remember, question mark is a parameter. That says that I'm not going to define it right now. I'm going to define it later on when, uh, when we're actually running it. I'm going to grab the value for that parameter from someplace. All right? We've already seen example, uh, the example last time where we grabbed it from the dropdown. Now we're going to grab it from the query string. All right, so I click Next, and I get the same screen that I had before, where I have to supply the parameter. But instead of saying Control, which I did last time because we were pulling it from a dropdown, I say Query String. What is the Query String field we're going to use? What did I call it on the Query String? I called it ID. All right. Remember, this is where I said you could call it anything. You could call it Fred, you could call it data, you could call it whatever. As long as this page matched the other page. Well, on the other page, when we corrected it, when we uh, created it, 
we called it um, ID. So I'm going to use ID now. ID. So I go and run the query and test it. And sure enough, I get the values. I get the specialty ID, I get the pizza name, and I get the name of the image. All right. So I can finish. Now I'm going to go and bind these together. All right. This isn't going to be all the way there, but I'm going to test it at this point. All right. I'm going to test to make sure this works. Because if this doesn't work, if I'm not pulling the name out of the database right, I can't possibly display the image right. So I want to make sure this part works. So can I call this page directly? I have to call the list first, right? Because this page needs something on the query string. So either I'm going to manually test it by typing it in, which I could do, but this, the ball really starts rolling at this page because this is where I select the pizza that I want. So I'm going to set this guy as a start page. So I'll run it. I click on Hawaiian and I get that. All right? I click on meat lovers and I get that. And so on down the line. Okay, so that worked. All right? What didn't work though? Well, I want to pretty up that a little bit and I want to um, actually add the image. So, we'll go back here. Again, do I need to change anything from the database? No. I have everything I need. I have the name of the pizza. I have the ID, which like I said is always a good idea to have, right? Because, you know, we could do something with it on this page, you know. Um, there could be a more details page, for example, that we would want to create a link for that talked about exactly how the pizza is made or whatever. All right, the history of this pizza, you know, the controversy of whether pineapple is a valid pizza topping or not, any of those sorts of things could be on that other page. So we always, as a general rule, want the primary key of the table to be included. But we don't necessarily need to show it. And then here, instead of the image name, we want to show the image. So I'm going to go edit columns, edit fields. I'm going to delete the ID. And I'm going to delete the pizza image because this is just a plain text for pizza image. And I'm going to go and say I want the image field. I want an image field. And I'll click add. This is very, 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 very similar to the link, right? Except instead of having the link text and the URL, we have the alternate text field, which remember, every image should have an alternate uh, text for accessibility reasons. And we have a URL field. Well, in this case, what's the value of the alternate text? Well, let's just make it the name of the pizza. Data text format. I'm going to get fancy here, and I'm going to say image of curly bracket zero. So what it's going to do is it's going to put the words image of and it's going to put the value of the pizza name. So for Hawaiian pizza, the alt text will be image of Hawaiian pizza. Same idea as we did with the, the link URL. Whereas the curly bracket zero represents the first element on this list of things. Data URL image field, well that is pizza image. How am I going to format this? Well, remember my URL in the database didn't include the images folder. So I'm going to put images slash curly bracket zero. So I'm going to take the name of the I'm going to take the name of the pizza and I'm going to put the word images in front of it. with a slash. So that way I'll get my URL will be images slash name of the pizza. Or the, the pizza image name, rather. So I go and do this. And I run it. 
Hawaiian pizza. I click there and boom, there's my picture of Hawaiian pizza. Now one thing you should recognize, and I say this again, I've talked already about how to format your web pages and how to format your grid views and details views. I think I talked about grid views, but formatting details views are about the same as far as applying the CSS. I don't necessarily, I will not necessarily take the time to make my pages look pretty. Use the stuff that you have learned, all right? So make, for your assignments, make a master page. Spend some time prettying them up. Make sure there's links from pages to pages so that I can click around and navigate your assignments like I would navigate an actual website. So make what you turn in look like part of an actual website. Just in the interest of time, I don't go over that every lecture. So this is a pretty bare bones thing, but it sort of breaks my heart a little bit when I look at people's assignments and they look like this, all right? Um, spend the extra two minutes to clean it up, all right, or 10 minutes or whatever. It doesn't take that much effort to make the page look uh, a lot nicer. Now, what happens when we pick one of these? It's smart enough not to put an image there. So notice it doesn't put a broken image there. All right? It just puts no image there. And we can actually put in an image that we can use if there's no picture. You know, like in the high school yearbook, they will say picture not available or something like that. We can do the same thing for, uh, for our pizzas. Or we can just leave it blank, whatever we choose. How would we put a picture not available image there? Well, let's Google picture not available. Anyone watching Arrested, uh, Arrested Development has an idea of what we might see here. Oh, unfortunately we don't. I'm going to use this one. Oh, I'm going to use this one. Because that way when I put my credit on the bottom of the page, it'll say both of these can't come from nwikipedia.org. So I'm going to open that up and let's save that image. I am going to move that image to my images folder. image not available.png and I can actually say in the grid view that if there is no image use images slash image not available So that's under the null image URL. So if there's no URL in the database for the image, this is what you get. Um, oh, I want to put credits here. So I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to put a paragraph. again. Hawaiian will show the Hawaiian pizza. Meat lovers will show this image is not available. No. And again, it's smart enough to know if there's no image URL, don't make a broken image. So if you prefer, you could do that. Or if you want to include uh, some sort of null image that said, hey, there's no image available for this, you could do that as well. We have eight minutes. Let's see if we could do the last piece. We should be able to do the last piece because we've done it before. This is simply going to be the um, list of all the toppings that belong to this pizza. And I'm going to use the uh, graphical 
uh, editor for this, uh, simply to show you a different way of doing things. Um, really, the only difference between this and um, what we've done before is that we use a graphical editor. So that's going to create the join using a different syntax. And I am going to, to do what? Oh, we're going to grab the value from the query string not from the drop down. So we go to this page. We had decided before that this page the data source for this is going to be a new data source. I'm going to go to Query Builder, and I need specialty pizza topping and toppings. What do I want to display here? I want to display toppings I'm going to grab the primary key, even though I probably don't need it. Topping name, yeah. description, and calories. I'm going to add a where clause on here. Where especially pizza ID equals question mark. I can test the query, put in a value for this, and it will show me down there it's hard to see because this is yeah, there you go. Probably want an order by. Remember that. If you don't specify the order by the data order by the database gives it to you in the order that it feels like it. So I'm going to say order by topping name. Okay, and I get an error. Oh, oh, I almost said a bad word there. two words. Alright, I click OK. Now it's OK. If I look, I see the slightly different syntax for the join. And you can do things called inner joins and outer joins, which we will not talk about now. All right? But this is simply a different syntax for the join, instead of having it part of the where clause. If you remember back a while ago, I said there was a different syntax for the join that you could use. Again, where does the parameter going to come from? It's going to come from the query string. What's the query string field? ID. Now I can run this and it doesn't show anything. I'm going to pretend I did this on purpose. 
What step did I miss? Um, that's close to the right answer. What did I not do with the grid view? I didn't bind it. I didn't say where the data source was for it. So therefore, if I say data source, SQL data source 2, then it will show me and I pick Hawaiian. Now I get the grid view. And I could go and hide the toppings ID if I wanted to and, again, cosmetically make it better. You know, this is a basic format for many of the queries that you're going to do, right? Queries are either going to be showing everything from a particular table or going to be parameterized table or tables, or going to be parameterized, where you supply a value and that is used to filter out the data that you want. Um, you can then display that data a variety of different ways. There's like several options, and we'll probably explore some of these options in upcoming weeks, but there are like the simple, straightforward ways and those are the details views and grid views. Those are real easy to use, but they don't offer tons of flexibility. There are other ways that are more flexible, but require you to do more work. So we started out with the simple ones that don't require a lot of work that are straightforward. Later on, we'll get into the ones that are a little more involved. All right, any questions over this? So if Tuesday next week I gave you a small task to create a page like this, I'm not saying I'm doing it, but I'm not saying I'm not doing it. Okay. All right. Do you think you'd be able to do it? Yes. Here, here's the answer I would hope to hear. I'll try, I'll, I'll try <laughs> is, is one answer I would like to hear. Uh, uh, another answer is, I'm not sure I could do all of it, but I could probably do some of it. I really hope that that's the answer for most of the, whether it be a homework assignment or if I give like an, an activity or whatever, I hope that's the answer for this. Because if there's stuff that you, you can't do anything at all, then we need to take a look and, and get you up to speed in some areas. If you don't understand it all and you can't do it all perfectly, that's fine. That's exactly where I would expect people to be in this class. All right? And if you can do it all, good for you. Uh, I'm going to have to make things harder. All right? Uh, so there, there might be an activity uh, Tuesday. There might not be. I don't know. I'll have, have to think about it and decide. But be prepared for that in case there is. All right, I'm going to go and unlock the lab, and then I will come back here to grab my files, and then I'll be back in lab.